We previously made a video covering the first 36 chapters of the Egghead Arc, right before the God Valley flashback, in Chapter 10, 94. Now, with Chapter 11, 23, where the Straw Hats managed to escape after the Joy Boys Ancient Stored attack in Chapter 11, 22, we can say that this marks the end of the Ark. However, officially, the Ark concludes in Chapter 11, 24, making it approximately 66 chapters long. Therefore, we can now conduct a comprehensive review of the main points of this arc and provide an honest opinion. Of course, everyone has their own perspective and is free to share their thoughts on how they experience the events. So, in the previous video, we discussed how this arc was on track to becoming the best arc in One Piece history. The events were highly intense, primarily because Oda was focusing on external world events, away from the Straw Hats, which were captivating and exciting. There was significant attention on the Five Elders, the prominence of Shanks and Blackbeard, Garp's appearance, and some pages featuring Buggy and Crossguild targeting the Marines. Then, in Chapter 1095, we entered the God Valley flashback and Kuma and Bonnie's backstory. After that, Oda shifted his focus back to the events on Egghead Island. The Straw Hats attempt to escape, some battles, the involvement of all the Gorose, Vegapunk's speech, and the interaction between all these components with the presence of the Straw Hats, the story's heroes. To be completely honest, after the God Valley and Kuma flashback, there was a significant shift in my evaluation of this arc. What could have been a Marineford level arc in terms of intensity transformed into an arc with perplexing points that somewhat ruined its enjoyment and realism, preventing it from reaching the legendary status we had hoped for. As for the early events, I won't delve into them too much as I already covered them in the previous video. In summary, the start of the Egghead arc was the best beginning to any arc in the New World. For the first time, the author delved deeply into external world events. We had never seen Shanks in action or his fights with anyone before. Garp, Blackbeard's movements, his trip to Hancock's Island, his fight with Law, and his acquisition of the Poneglyphs were all significant. Also at this time, Kizaru was on his way to Egghead and we also saw some notable events involving Aokiji. The only negative points at that time, which I mentioned, were Vegapunk's goofy appearance, which many had hoped would be more serious, and also the way Saul was brought back from the dead. The beginning of this arc was truly amazing, possibly one of the best in One Piece history. In my opinion, it made this arc a worthy competitor to the legendary Marineford arc. But then, something critical happened that changed everything. The Egghead Incident which was said to shake the entire world of One Piece. Therefore, the overall evaluation of this arc will be determined by the outcome of this incident and how it involves the Straw Hats. Initially, only an admiral, a Gorose, and a large fleet of marine ships were sent against a small crew and Vegapunk's technology. But later, no one expected that all the five elders would get involved. Saturn and Kizaru were already more than enough along with the massive number of marine soldiers. But the intervention of all the five elders would make things difficult, even for Oda. These are the pinnacle of the world government, after all, and it's hard to create a convincing scenario where the Straw Hats escape from them without sacrifices, especially since we know that Oda does not kill the Straw Hats. Let's talk about the five elders first. They are considered some of the most important characters in the story having made their first appearance over 800 chapters ago, specifically in chapter 233 in 2002, 22 years ago. Saturn entered Egghead and appeared terrifying, exploding ahead and paralyzing some of the Straw Hats. He also displayed regeneration and immunity to attacks. Early on, many fans believed that his presence alone, alongside an admiral, was enough, given that he is a Gorose right below Imu, the leader of the world government who is expected to be the final enemy in the endgame of the story. But after that excellent introduction, Saturn started to become a punching bag and posed no real threat. He was attacked by everyone, Kuma, Bonnie, Luffy, and even appeared in front of the cowardly Usopp. Of course, some fans might argue, as usual, that the Five Elders are just old men and were never said to be strong. But the answer to that is simple. Based on the story itself, First, the Five Elders have always been portrayed as pivotal characters, even appearing before the Yonko and the Admirals. Their role is very special. Second, they have always appeared as fighters, 
with visible scars, and one of them is even a swordsman. Additionally, their age suggests they have vast experience and knowledge of how to fight and deal with enemies. Third, the final enemy is the world government, and these five are directly below Imu. Lastly, Oda himself stated in an interview with the creator of Detective Conan that the Gorosei had not yet shown their true value. So, we were surprised when, in the end, Saturn couldn't handle things alone and didn't demonstrate the importance of the A Gorosei. Instead, all of them appeared, leading fans to naturally assume that the Straw Hats were in great danger. But as the chapters progressed, the five elders became nothing more than illustrations with no real threat, failing even in the simple task of stopping Vegapunk's broadcast. They were eventually defeated by the ancient Joy Boys Hockey, and the Straw Hats escaped. While they did demonstrate strong abilities in terms of durability, regeneration, and cutting for Ethan Baron, the result was that many fans weren't impressed. They didn't do anything shocking, like what the Admirals did in the past, such as Kizaru at Sabaudi or Akainu at Marineford. These moments made fans wary of certain characters, expecting surprising future developments from them. However, with the way the Five Elders performed in Egghead, I wonder if fans will still be eager to see them in the final Great War Oda has been teasing. I won't talk too much about their animal forms, as that might be a minor detail for some. The Five Elders could have remained in their human forms and been a great threat, fighting with style, like Shanks or Mihawk, but Oda chose the route of making them large and monstrous in appearance, which didn't have the desired impact on the battlefield. Now, moving to the Straw Hats, Luffy, as usual, has leaned more towards silliness and humor in battles since his Gear 5 transformation. We didn't see much of a difference from him in the Egghead arc, except for a few small moments. Zoro, as always, was lost, and Oda didn't focus on giving us a true test of his strength or fully showcasing Ethan Baron's hockey and power against him. The rest of the crew was average, with Usopp still being a coward, despite the story nearing its end. Moving on to Vegapunk's speech, in my opinion, it didn't reveal anything new about the story's secrets. He talked about things One Piece fans already knew, although some may excuse this by saying that the people in the One Piece world are unaware of what he mentioned. The exception was his talk about the past flood that will happen again in the future, and some other small details we didn't know. This flood is something fans will eagerly anticipate in future chapters. However, Vegapunk didn't delve deeper into the secrets of Devil Fruits, the D, or key information about Joy Boy or the Void Century. Other than that, he spoke about his dream of an infinite energy source and repeated the same information we already know about the Void Century, though the people in the One Piece world are unaware of it. He also shared his personal experience, discovering these facts and how the government criminalized the search for these historical truths. Additionally, he disclosed what we already knew about Joy Boy, along with one new piece of information. Joy Boy was the first pirate in history. He also mentioned that Joy Boy lost his battle at that time, and talked about the massive sunken world beneath the seas of One Piece, as well as talking about the ancient weapons. The event that will shake the world is what Vegapunk revealed in his speech, and how the people of One Piece will react to it, such as the details about the Void Century and the government's prohibition on investigating it, as well as his words about the ancient weapons and the upcoming flood. Naturally, we will see how the characters in the One Piece world will deal with this information in the future chapters. There's also the God Valley incident, which I found to be one of the most impressive points. I liked how Oda presented it as a kind of competition, showing the government's absolute evil, and we also got some hints about Garling, who has now become a Gorosei, which adds a lot of anticipation for his character. Additionally, the involvement of various pirates and key figures in that event was logical and well executed by Oda. I also want to talk about some of the central characters in this arc, like Kuma, who has garnered a lot of sympathy from fans. He's one of those rare types in this world, with a wonderful human kindness that makes you love him despite the cruel and unjust past he endured, he keeps his true nature. Oda delved deeply into his character in this arc and explained a lot. However, one point that remains unexplained is how Kuma got involved in the events especially his strike against Saturn, despite having lost his memories. Even Vegapunk, the genius scientist, couldn't find an explanation for this. There's a possibility that Oda will provide more context later, when he goes into detail about the Buccaneers' race, but Kuma's role after that moment seemed limited. 
He wasn't really involved in the subsequent events at Egghead. Oda placed him in the present events of Egghead just for that specific scene. As for his daughter Bonnie, Oda also focused on her quite a bit and gave us more insight into her character. However, she wasn't impressive. The moment where she briefly transformed into Joy Boy raised a lot of questions. Some felt that her transformation into Nika was a trite and shallow imitation, while others believed it was just a minor detail that doesn't significantly impact the larger plot. Some also thought that her transformation might hint at something for the future of the story. Overall, Bonnie could have been portrayed in a more independent and impactful light. Moving on, the escape scenes and battles in this arc felt somewhat lenient, with the Straw Hat crew not facing significant challenges. On the other hand, the Five Elders didn't live up to the level of danger we had anticipated. We were hoping for a level of excitement and tension that would leave us eager for their involvement in the final world-shaking war that Oda is still building up to. In conclusion, while we were hoping Oda would maintain a certain level of seriousness and give more attention to the key elements of the story, the arc fell short in some areas. This shifted my rating of the arc, which I initially expected to be one of the best, marking the beginning of the final saga in One Piece, down to a level closer to other arcs like Wano or Dressrosa. However, Egghead does stand out in its brilliant start, which was truly enjoyable. The external events in this arc greatly raised the stakes and kept the tension high. Oda could have chosen to maintain a balance between the external events and the main Egghead storyline, or he could have focused entirely on Egghead. He chose the latter for about the last 20 chapters. But, in general, the final moments of Egghead lacked the punch to make it truly unforgettable. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can also check out the previous video, where we discussed the first part of the Egghead arc, covering the first 36 chapters up until chapter 1094. Thank you for watching. Please share your thoughts with us, as it's important to hear differing opinions, as well as your personal impressions of the arc.